Welcome to part 5 of this Blender tutorial series where we're creating this industrial building. So in this part we are going to finish all the texturing. So in the previous part we did some of the texturing, we added these brick walls here to these buildings, so we're going to finish the texturing in this part. Now before we start this part, I want to let you know about my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack. So my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack has all of my procedural materials, and they're all pre-set up for Blender's Asset Browser, and they all have custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. So if you purchase and install my Ultimate Material Pack as an asset library in a Blender, then you can just click and drag and drop the materials onto your objects to quickly add materials to your 3D scenes. And I also update the material pack every time I create 10 more procedural materials. So if you're an existing customer, then you can re-download the product files after every update to get the new materials. If you'd like to purchase my ultimate procedural material pack, I'll have the links in the description where you can purchase. And if you'd like to learn how to create my procedural materials, you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. So let's start now by doing the gray bricks. So let's just select the object and then we'll go over here to the shading workspace. I'll go into the rendered viewport mode and then let's just select the gray bricks material. So we already used the principal texture setup to set up these bricks and we're pretty much gonna do that the same way. So make sure that you have the node wrangler enabled and then we're gonna select the principal shader and I'll press control shift T. Then we'll locate to the folder where we have the textures and I'm gonna select the color, hold down the control key and select the normal gel and the roughness and click on principal texture setup so that it automatically sets up all the textures. Now we need to fix the UV unwrapping just like we did in the previous part so let's go over here to the UV editing and we'll zoom in here and I'll hold down the alt key and select that loop right there and I can hit G to grab and move it around. Now I want to align it up with these parts here so what I'm going to do is hit B for the box select and I'm just going to box select all of these faces here which are right next to it so that we can align it up. So you can see those faces were these faces here so we're going to deselect everything in the UV editor. Let's select these here, this island here and we're going to move this over and we're going to stick it really close to this one right here. So we'll just drag it very very close if I zoom in we're going to stick it right next to the other one. Let's zoom in here and see if that's looking correct. So it's not looking correct so let's try rotating it by 180 degrees. And what I need to do is scale it. I need to scale it on the x-axis by negative one. And then I need to rotate it back by 180 degrees, so back how it was before. And now you can see that it's correct. So you just need to play around with it. Sometimes you have to scale it and invert it by negative one. Sometimes you have to rotate it the opposite way around. But now you can see that all of those bricks are aligning up correctly. Now let's deselect everything. And then if I click on the gray bricks here, if you do this in the material properties, click on the gray bricks, you can click on select and that is going to select all of the gray bricks. So it's going to select the part of the mesh which has the gray bricks. And I'm now going to select everything in the UV editor and I'm going to bring it up and down until it fits the other bricks there, just like that. So these are different colored bricks so I don't really want them to be aligned up exactly because they're a different material, but I want the bricks to be aligned up, but it's okay if they're a different color because they're going to be a different color anyways because we'll be changing the color and making them gray. But just make sure those bricks are aligning up. And and that looks great. So let's go back here to the shading workspace and I now want to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a color ramp to change the colors and make it gray. So I'll put it between the base color and the principal shader. And then for this tab over here on this side, I'm going to make it a mid gray color or kind of a dark gray color and the hex value if you want to use the same value I'm using the hex value will be 4a 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 and then I'm also going to drag out this black tab just a little bit so that everything's a little bit darker and that's going to be it for the gray bricks now we will select the window frames and I'm going to make the window frames material so for the base color here I'm just going to make it kind of like a slight gray color and the hex value will be d2 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 and then also turn the roughness down to a 0.3 so it's a little bit more more shiny because it's going to be kind of made out of plastic. Let's now select the windows material and for the windows material I'm going to search for a glossy shader and I'm also going to search for a transparent shader. I'm going to be making my own custom glass shader with these two so we're going to be mixing them together instead of just using the glass shader. So I'll delete the principled shader. We're also going to add a mix shader and then we're going to put the glossy into the top one and the transparent here we're going to put into the bottom one and I'll turn the factor to 0.8 and then we want to put the mix shader into the surface of course so we can actually see that and then let's turn the glossy roughness all the way down to zero 
And then let's also make sure that the glossy color is fully white. So now we'll select the rooftop material. And for this material, we're gonna make the base color fully black. And then here on the roughness, I'll turn this up to like a 0.7 so it is more rough. Now we'll select this piece here. This piece is gonna have the black metal. And for this, I do wanna add just a little bit of noise into the roughness to add some variation. So we'll go to the add menu. We'll search for a noise texture. We'll drop it here. We'll select the noise texture and press control T. And that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And I wanna use the object coordinates. So we'll put the object into the vector. Let's pre the noise texture and we'll change some of the settings so I'll turn the scale to 7 I'll make the detail 15 and the roughness I'll turn to 0.8 so it's a bit more rough so now I can put the noise texture factor into the roughness. We can preview the roughness. And for the base color here, we're gonna make it a very dark gray. And I'll be using a hex value of 26, 26, 26 for the base color. So now I wanna change the roughness to make it more reflective. So we can change the colors by adding a color ramp. So we'll put the color ramp between the noise and the principal shader. And then I can just click on the black tab and I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. And then this white tab here, I'm gonna make this down so it's a bit more shiny. So now if I zoom in here to the edge and kind of look at it on the side, you can see there's a little bit of variation, but it is pretty reflective. Now, if we look over here on this building, you can see the UVs are all messed up. So we could re-UV unwrap this, but this building is just a duplicate of this building here. So we're just gonna duplicate it and move it over because it's basically the same exact building. So let's go back to solid view. I'll go back to the layout here, just so we can see this better. And we're just gonna select this building here and I'll duplicate it and move it over. Let's go to top view, we'll go to wireframe. I'll rotate this by 90 degrees and we're just gonna stick it here really close and just basically stick it on top of the other building that we added. Let's go to solid view. So now you can see they're on top of each other. So I'll just hit the H key to hide that building that we duplicated. We can select the old building and just delete it and then press Alt H to bring back the old building. So now if we go into the rendered viewport mode, you can see it's using the correct UVs because we duplicated it from that other building. So we don't have to redo that. So now let's add the light bricks and the light bricks are gonna be on this building here. So we'll select this building and we're gonna go back over here to the shading workspace Let's go into the rendered viewport mode and we're going to select the light bricks and then with the principled shader selected We'll press Control shift T again We're going to select the normal GL the roughness and the color map and we're going to use the principled texture setup to automatically set up the textures So now of course we need to UV unwrap the object So we'll go into edit mode and we'll select everything We'll hit U and we'll do the smart UV project and we'll just click on unwrap so now we can go to the UV editing and we can play around with the UVs. So let's zoom into the object here. And actually, if I click on this drop down here, I want to click on the HD rise here and use this one because it's kind of a bit brighter. And then also let's turn the strength all the way up to two. So it's like really bright. So it's really easy to see the UVs or to see the texture. So we'll go into edit mode and we'll select everything. And here in the UV editor, let's just make sure we select everything and I'll scale up quite big. And if I navigate here to the front view and kind of zoom in, I want to scale it up so that the texture size is about the same as the other bricks. So just scale that up to about there. So now let's go into the camera view and let's just take a look at the UVs and see if there's anything else that needs to be fixed. So like right here, this part needs to, the UVs need to move over to the other side of the bricks. And also we need to do that for this part here. So let's go ahead and fix this. So I'll go back into edit mode, alt select that loop right there. We can see what part has been selected. Also shift and alt select that there. So now we can just deselect everything in the UV editor. We're just gonna select this part here and this part here, and we're going to move the UVs over. Let's just move the UVs over, and we're just gonna place them right next to this one here. And it looks like this part here is actually this other one right here. So if I just deselect everything, hit the L key just to select that one there, I can move this over, and I'm gonna move this one really close. Just stick it there so it's overlapping. And that is looking good now. You can see now the bricks are the same color. And just to verify that, if I click between these, you can see this one's right here, and this one's right over here so you can see they're at the same exact spot there in the UV editor and if you want to you can select everything in the UV editor and you can move it along the x-axis to change the offset of where the bricks are and let's go over to this pillar right here and we're going to do the same thing so if I alt select that there you can see that is that piece there it's also shift and alt select that one there so we can now deselect everything we're going to box select this one here if I move that one you can see it's moving those bricks so we'll put these bricks really close we're going to stick them right next to this one and it looks like for this one I need to move it over here and stick it on the other side just like that so now you can see the correct colors are showing up so now we'll go back over here to the shading workspace and I just want to make the light bricks kind of a lightish yellowish color so what I'll do is go to the add menu and we're going to search for a mix color and we'll put it here after the base color and I'm going to put the color into color A 
And then for color B here, I'm gonna make this kind of like a tannish peachy color. And if you wanna use the same color I'm using, you can punch in a hex value of C1, 9A, 5F, and then the factor I'll turn to 0.55, so there's a little bit more of that. So this way we're kind of mixing in another color. So let's do the material now for those hinges. So we're gonna zoom in here, and we're gonna select this here, select that object, and we'll go to the hinges material. So click on the hinges. And for this color, we're just gonna make it kind of like a dark gray color. And then also let's turn the roughness down to a 0.4 so it's a bit more reflective. And for this one, we're just gonna make it a pretty dark color. And then let's turn the roughness down to like a 0.4 so it's a bit more shiny. Now let's navigate over here to the door and we will select this door handle here. So we'll select the door handle, we can zoom into it. For this one, let's turn the metallic value all the way to one. We'll turn the base color down so it's a little bit less bright. So I'm kind of gonna make it like a mid gray color and I'll turn the roughness down a bit to like a 0.4 so it's a bit more reflective. So we're now gonna do the sidewalk material. So we're gonna zoom out here, we'll select the sidewalk. Let's start by selecting everything. We'll select everything here in edit mode. We're gonna hit U and we'll do the unwrap smart UV project and just unwrap that. So we're now gonna click on the principal shader and we will press control shift T. And this time I'm gonna go into the concrete pavement folder. So again, I have a link in the video description if you wanna download this free texture here. So I'll go into the concrete pavement. So you'll need to download the image textures. I downloaded the 2K version and then you can extract the zip file and go into the folder. And I'm gonna select the diffuse and the normal and the roughness. We'll click on principal texture setup so it automatically sets up all the textures. And what we're gonna do now is go to the UV editing so we can scale the UVs. So let's look right down here at the sidewalk. And then in the UV editor, we can select everything and we're gonna scale it up quite large. And I'm also gonna rotate it by 90 degrees like that. And I can now scale it down and stick it right here. And what I wanna do is I want there to be about four of these tiles in the sidewalk. So if I scale this up a bit more, move it right down here, you can see there's one, two, three, and then there's the fourth one. So let's scale up a bit more. Just stick it right there so that the span of this here is gonna be about four of those tiles. All right, just like that. So if I go back to the object mode now, you can see the tile starts there and then there are four of them and then it ends right here. Let's also go back into edit mode and you can move it along the X axis if you wanna change that offset. So something like that is pretty good. So let's now go back over here to the shading workspace and we'll go into the rendered viewport mode. And I do wanna change a bit of the colors because I want it to be like a bit darker. So we're first gonna add an RGB curves here, put it after the base color. And I'm just gonna drag a dot way down here to kind of make it a bit darker because I think it was a bit too bright. And then I also wanna make there be no colors at all. So I just want it to be completely gray. So we're gonna search for a hue saturation value, put this after the RGB curves, and I can turn the saturation to zero so that way it's just going to be fully black and white. All right, we'll save our project again, and we're now gonna create the asphalt. So we're gonna select the road here, that's gonna be the asphalt material, and we'll select the principal shader, and again, press Control shift t And then you can download the asphalt texture with the link in the description. So you can download the texture and extract the zip file, and then go into the folder. And I'm gonna select the diffuse, and the normal, and the roughness, and we'll click on the principal texture setup. And then we'll just go into edit mode, and we'll select everything, and we'll just hit U, and we'll just do unwrap. So now we can go over here to the UV editing and we can scale the UVs. So you can see the texture is way too small. So if I select everything, select all the UVs, I can scale this up quite big, just scale it up much bigger so the road texture is a lot smaller. All right, that's pretty good. We'll go back here to the shading workspace. And then I do also wanna change the colors a bit of this because you can see it's just really bright. So to fix the colors, I will go to the add menu. We're gonna search for an RGB curves. So add the RGB curves here after the base color. And then we'll just drag this way down. We'll drag this dot way down down here so the texture is a lot darker. So now let's add the dirt texture. So we'll select this object here. This is the dirt one. Let's select everything in edit mode. We'll hit U and we're just gonna unwrap this. And then with the principled shader selected, I'll press Control Shift T. And you can also download this ground 072 texture with the link in the description. So you can extract the zip file and go into the folder. And then I wanna select the normal GL hold down the control key, select the roughness, and also the color. So just those three maps. And we'll again click on principal texture setup. And you can see it's way too small. So if we go over here to the UV editing, we wanna select all the UVs and we wanna scale them up really big. Let's go back into the camera view and kind of zoom in here. Just scale up really big so the texture is quite small. Let's go back over here to the shading workspace. And then I also wanna change the colors a bit for this texture. 
So I'll first go to the add menu, we'll add the RGB curves, and we'll put it here after the base color. And I want to start by making it much darker, so we're going to drag the dot way down here. And then if I click on the R for red, I also want there to be a bit less red because you can see it looks a little bit too red. So if I just drag this down, now it's looking more like a brown color and less red. And I think maybe I'll drag this down a little bit more so the dirt texture is even darker. Then I want to mix it with another color just to make it even more brown. So right here between the RGB curves and the principal shader, I'm going to add a mix color node. And we'll put it here after the RGB curves. And then for color B, I'm going to make this a dark brown color. And the hex value is going to be 2, 3. 1D, 1.8, if you want to use the same color I'm using, but it's going to be slightly brown and very dark. And then here on the factor, I'll turn this up to like a 0.6, so it's even darker. So you can see we're blending between only using the dark color or only using the base color. So I'm going to make it a 0.6. So now if I zoom into the dirt here, you can see it looks kind of brownish and pretty dark. Now this dirt texture also looks pretty smooth, and so I want to put a noise texture into the normal to give it some bump. So right here underneath the textures, I will add a noise texture. We'll drop it here, and then I can plug the mapping vector up to the vector of the noise texture. Let's control shift and select the noise texture preview it, and we'll change the settings. So I'll turn the scale to 4, I'll turn the detail all the way to the max of 15, and I'll turn the roughness up to like a 0.6. So I can now add a bump node, and we're going to use the bump node to mix the noise texture into the normal. So we'll put the bump node here between the normal map and the principal shader, and the noise texture factor can go into the height value, and the normal can go through the normal here, so then the bump normal can go into the normal of the shader. So let's just preview this, and you can see it looks much more bumpy. But that is a bit too bumpy, so I'll turn the strength down to like a 0.3, so it is a bit less strong. But it still looks quite bumpy. All right, so I'll go back here to the layout and we will save this again by hitting Control S and this will wrap it up for this part of the tutorial series. So I hope you've been enjoying this so far and thank you for watching. So in the next part, in part six, we're gonna be downloading some grass models and we'll be using geometry nodes to place the grass all over the ground. So when the next part is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen and the link will be in the video description when it's released. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part.